China has just presented a big gift to Thailand shortly after the completion of the Thai elections. According to the Chinese technical team involved in the Kunming Bangkok railway negotiations, China has agreed to transfer part of its high speed rail construction technology to Thailand, assisting the country in independently constructing its own high speed rail network. Based on this foundation, China and Thailand have reached a preliminary agreement on technology transfer in 11 areas of high speed rail construction, including track design, tunnel design, bridge construction, train station design, power lighting, signal systems, heating and ventilation systems, among others. Additionally, the two parties are currently negotiating and discussing specific patent sharing authorizations, which also involve the transfer of technology related to Chinese train design and manufacturing. As well as power supply and other advanced technologies. In other words, Thailand will become the second country after Indonesia to receive technology transfer from China in the field of high speed rail. Indonesia previously received China's assistance in the construction of the Jakarta Bandung high speed rail, which was already in operation. At last year's G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia proudly showcased the Jakarta Bandung high speed rail to world leaders. As we all know, high speed rail is China's flagship product, and Japan has already emerged as a competitor on the international stage. If Thailand also masters high speed rail design, won't China has another competitor in the future? Many people are concerned about whether the transfer of China's high speed rail technology to other countries will lead to technology leakage. This concern is indeed unnecessary. As we all know, the source of China's high speed rail technology can be traced back to Siemens in Germany. It is an upgrade and industrialization of the German high speed rail technology. However, it doesn't mean that just because China can do it, other countries can as well. China's ability to absorb German high speed rail technology, overtake it on curves, and develop more advanced high speed rail technology can be attributed to three major advantages. First, China has a vast territory and a huge population base. The market for long distance high speed rail transportation is relatively small in many small countries, which are equivalent in land area and population to just one province of China. If these countries were to develop high speed rail technology on their own, the costs would be enormous, and even with the full effort of the entire nation, successful development would not be guaranteed. Can Thailand replicate the miracle of China's high speed rail by partnering with Siemens with its national strength? Clearly, the answer is no. Second, China has capital investment without considering costs. It is difficult to succeed in the research and development of high speed rail technology solely relying on private enterprises. The success of Germany's Siemens and Japan's high speed rail is also reliant on the support of their respective governments' finances. China's high speed rail is 100% state owned and essentially led by the state council, allowing for continuous capital investment without cost constraints. Third, China has a massive industrial system to support it. The high speed rail industry chain is extremely complex. It is not enough to simply achieve technological advancements, a multitude of industry chain companies must be established to ensure their continuous revenue. This requires a sufficiently large high speed rail mileage. If only a few hundred kilometers of high speed rail are built, the investment costs of these industry chain companies will never be recovered. Without sufficient profit support, this industry chain will inevitably collapse. Many small and medium sized countries face not only technological challenges but also capital challenges in the construction of their high speed rail industry chains. This is similar to China's semiconductor industry. Without lithography machines, no matter how well designed your chip is, it is useless. In this case, there is no need to worry about technology leakage when China transfers its high speed rail technology to Indonesia and Thailand. They simply cannot establish a complete high speed rail industry chain and cannot receive a full set of industrial technology transfers. The technology transfer from China to Indonesia and Thailand mainly focuses on track design, tunnel design, bridge construction, train station design, power lighting, and signal systems. As you may have noticed, high speed train technology transfer is not included. Railway construction, bridge construction, train station construction, power lighting, and signal systems are closely related to logistical maintenance. When building high speed rail in Thailand, local workers must be given priority. Therefore, rail lane, bridge and tunnel construction, and train station building must involve the participation of Thai workers. 
After the completion of these infrastructure constructions, a portion of the management authority must be transferred to Thai engineers. It's like a master bringing along an apprentice, technology transfer is essential. These technology transfers allow Thailand to acquire the daily operation and maintenance of high-speed rail. However, they still rely heavily on China for core technologies. From the perspective of the industrial chain, transferring some technologies is more beneficial for the interests of both China and Thailand. China retains core train manufacturing technologies and allocates some peripheral technology industries to Thailand. Logistics service companies such as road and bridge construction companies, signal technology service companies, and lighting system manufacturers can be established locally in Thailand. This not only promotes employment in Thailand but also allows China to maintain technological leadership. This is similar to the cooperation between Airbus and China in the aviation industry. Airbus has established assembly plants in Tianjin, China, and has imparted assembly techniques to Chinese workers. However, core research and development as well as manufacturing technologies remain in the hands of Airbus. Airbus sells airplanes to Chinese airlines and continues to provide software and logistical technical services to Chinese airlines, achieving mutual interests and long-term cooperation. So, why did China transfer high-speed rail technology to Thailand? In 1900, Britain and France proposed a plan to build a railway from Kunming to Singapore, which was the prototype of the Transasian Railway. The purpose of building this railway was simply for the convenience of plundering and continuously exporting resources from Southeast Asia and China through railways. However, this plan was abandoned due to the unstable international situation. With the rise of China's infrastructure, the Transasian Railway has been reintroduced, but the purpose of building the railway has completely changed. Nowadays, the Transasian Railway is a true golden corridor. The most typical example is the construction of the China-Laos Railway, which has helped Laos to prosper. Laos has a mountainous terrain and no seaports. Before the opening of the China-Laos Railway, there were only 3.5 kilometers of railway within Laos, making it a landlocked country and causing economic difficulties. After the construction of the China-Laos Railway, it directly connects Kunming, China, to the capital of Laos, Vientiane, with a total length of 1,035 kilometers, creating 110,000 job opportunities for the local people of Laos. Although the China-Laos Railway is not a high-speed rail, with a running speed of only 160 kilometers per hour, it is already two to five times faster than passenger trains in Southeast Asia. It can be considered as a local high-speed rail. Therefore, some Laotian people also refer to this railway as the China-Laos High-Speed Rail. After its completion, many tourists from other countries visit Laos specifically to experience the China-Laos High-Speed Rail. With this railway, Laos goods can be transported out of the mountains at a lower cost. The transportation cost per ton of goods from Vientiane to Kunming is reduced by 40% to 50%, and the transportation cost along the route within Laos is reduced by 20% to 40%. The opening of the China-Laos Railway significantly shortens the travel time from Kunming to Laos. It will also attract a large number of Chinese tourists to visit Laos each year, transforming Laos from a landlocked country to a land-connected country and helping the local people overcome poverty. At the time of the railway construction, some media slandered China, claiming that it would plunge Laos into a debt crisis. However, a Laotian official expressed his opinion. Laos is a landlocked country without other opportunities like other countries. If we don't join the railway project, we will miss the chance to connect with China, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. If we don't build the railway, we will miss development opportunities. If we don't accept it, we won't owe any debts, but we will remain poor. The fact has proven that after the opening of the China-Laos Railway, it has helped local economic development and stimulated the rise of the local tourism industry which has truly benefited the people of Laos. The construction of the China-Laos Railway has also made Thailand envious. The Bangkok Post in Thailand even called on the Thai government to expedite the construction of railway networks to connect with the China-Laos Railway, which will bring new opportunities for economic growth to the three countries. Duran Adelwatana, chief economist of Bangkok Bank, stated, I don't think China is trying to trap Laos in a debt trap. It's not a Trojan horse strategy. In my opinion, 
it will be a win-win situation. Thailand also wants to integrate itself into the Trans-Asian Railway. Although the cooperation between China and Thailand on the railway has encountered many obstacles, it was eventually finalized and construction began in early 2017. In fact, behind China's high-speed rail exports is the creation of a Eurasian economic circle centered around China, extending south to Southeast Asia, westward through Central Asia, and connecting the Middle East and Europe. However, regardless of which line it is, Thailand cannot be bypassed. The China-Thailand Railway is the key to the Trans-Asian Railway Network. The currently under construction China Thailand Railway will connect with the China Laos Railway, with a total length of 873 kilometers and is expected to open for operation in 2027. For China, transferring high speed rail technology to Thailand and enabling Thailand to adopt Chinese high speed rail standards will contribute to the construction of the Trans Asian Railway, connecting Southeast Asia and China. The construction of the Trans Asian Railway will also help China bypass the Strait of Malacca, providing immense strategic value. For Southeast Asian countries, the Trans-Asian Railway can facilitate the development of international trade, reduce trade costs, and drive local economic growth. It is a true golden corridor. The benefits of doing so include reducing China's economic dependence on the United States. Balancing the consumption market between Europe and the Middle East with the consumption market of the United States, and balancing the raw materials and agricultural products market of Southeast Asia and Central Asia with that of the United States. Integrating Eurasian land power to counter British and American naval power. This is the fundamental driving force behind China's promotion of the Belt and Road Initiative. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.